of how people like Sting and The Undertaker have been treated within the last year and a half. We've seen The Undertaker streak end at WrestleMania. Sting has yet to win. At a major pay-per-view, Daniel Bryan was forced into retirement because of the authority overworking Daniel Bryan and battling Daniel Bryan for over a year and a half. It's ridiculous how many people are on the DL because of the authority, how Sting and The Undertaker have been treated within the last year and a half, and then you blame uh, you know, WWE creative all the time uh, for the low ratings. But really, is it WWE creative or are the people who are overworking these wrestlers the ones to blame, like Triple H and Stephanie? It's not really... Uh, WWE Creative, you're saying, you know, be far more creative, but the thing is, you know, are we really blaming WWE Creative, or should we be blaming people like Triple H and Stephanie for overworking their talent and pushing them beyond their physical limits? We've seen Sting, obviously, uh, push beyond his physical limits. That's why he had an injury at Night of Champions, and we haven't seen him since. And what's really scary about this whole circumstance is they don't even talk about Sting anymore. The only time they mention him is when they promote 2K16 as part of the Legends roster, which they're obviously going to do because Sting uh, was a big part of the Legends roster for 2K15 and obviously 2K16, the follow-up. He was the biggest wrestler they had on the roster of last year's video game title and this year also. So obviously, appropriately, they're going to include him in the trailer, but other than that, they don't talk about him at all, and it's just really ridiculous, and I think that for WrestleMania 32, I'd love to see Sting on the WrestleMania 32 card, whether it be in a match with the likes of Bray Wyatt, Randy Orton, Brock Lesnar, even The Undertaker, regardless of who you put Sting in the ring with, he's got to win his next match against whoever his opponent is, because if you're not going to put Sting over, there's no point of even having Sting on the active roster. If you're having Sting on the active roster, at least have him win matches. It's okay to mix it up and have him win a certain portion of his matches and lose a certain portion of his matches. It's happened all the time for Sting in TNA, WCW. He always wins a number of matches and loses a number of matches with it all mixed in together. But the number of times Sting has lost in WWE are significantly outnumbering the amount of times Sting has actually won. I think he's only won one match of the three that he's been involved in. And it was only because... It was a tag team match, and they had to put over the fact John Cena was going to have the U.S. Championship put back on him, and Seth Rollins was going to drop the title out of John Cena that following Sunday. So that's obviously why uh, they had things play out the way that they did for Sting's first ever WWE match on TV. On free TV, they had to have Sting win. They couldn't have him lose on free TV pay-per-views, and entirely a different circumstance to talk about. But the thing is, I would have thought at least by now Sting would have won a major pay-per-view match, and it really pisses me off. I don't know if I'm really pissed off with the fact that Sting has not yet won a match in WWE or the fact that the way they're treating him. I think I'm pissed off in all different aspects of how they've been treating Sting. How they've been treating Sting, how Sting hasn't won a match uh, on pay-per-view, how Sting has not wrestled against the big names that he deserves to be wrestling against, like Brock Lesnar and The Undertaker, especially in the fall of WrestleMania 31 with how fans were chanting Undertaker. I mean, could you have been more obvious of what fans want to see at a WrestleMania? It's obviously Sting versus The Undertaker, which is why I recently archived my latest video blog on The Undertaker and Sting and how this is a match that wrestling fans wanted to see for years. I do recommend uh, that you listen to that back on playback because I think that Sting versus The Undertaker is great wrestling psychology at its finest, and I think it would be a great wrestling match, a pure wrestling match. Uh, that fans will remember for years. It would definitely outdo John Cena versus The Rock or any dream match we have seen at WrestleMania for the last number of years. It definitely would beat out a match like Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. Anything I uh, would beat out that. But I think The Undertaker versus Sting is wrestling psychology at its finest. And I think with uh, two of the wrestlers being so legendary in this industry, being loyal to their respective brands, I think that would be a great match to see by WrestleMania 32. I'm really pissed off over how everything has played out the way it has. Uh, for Sting, if you haven't already figured that out. And I want you to get in on the conversation in the comments of this video with Jonathan Clark 22 if you have a thought on how Sting is being treated. Do you agree or disagree with what I'm saying? Am I right or am I wrong? Having said what I have in relation to Sting and the way that he's been treated, I'm calling it unfair treatment because it really is unfair treatment of a legend, especially with a legend who has had such a legacy like Sting has had, no matter what wrestling organization or territory you're talking about. I mean, Sting tore it up in the 80s as the Bleach Blonde Sting, and then going from the Bleach Blonde Sting into the Crow, he went so dark in World Championship Wrestling when the NWO was running rough shot over World Championship Wrestling. Here comes this metamorphosized Sting with the baseball bat, copying one of the Crow uh, gimmicks from Hollywood, obviously, but the thing is, you know, he metamorphosized. Uh, into this unbelievable character in WCW that made WCW stand out in its finest hours. And I think that because of what Sting did for World Championship Wrestling and eventually would do for TNA Wrestling years later as TNA Champion Wrestling with the likes of Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe, and Mick Foley and incredible wrestling matches. I mean, Sting's obviously proven time and time again that he's still got it. Obviously, the chants were very correct 
at WrestleMania 31 with how fans were chanting, you've still got it, because that analogy was more accurate than anything that wrestling fans had accusated about uh, for WrestleMania. So I think that with how WWE have been trading Sting, I think we can get away. I was saying that it was absolutely ridiculous, and Sting deserved a lot better than what he got. Uh, so that's probably why we're left with more questions than we have answers about Sting's future uh, in WWE because nobody knows who he's going to come back and have issues with, who he's going to be targeting. Obviously, you would assume it would be the authority or whoever Sting had his neck broke because of in that match with Seth Rollins. You would think if Seth Rollins was not on the DL, Sting would have issues with Seth Rollins. Now, if Sting returns before Rollins does, obviously Sting's going to have to have some sort of issue with somebody he's either had issues with before in the past or someone who he hasn't had issues with before on the roster, but you would think that if Seth Rollins wasn't on the DL, he would instantly go after Seth Rollins even more so if Rollins was still champion by the time Sting returned. But because Seth Rollins and Sting are both on the DL right now, we have more unanswered questions than we do have answers to the questions we've had over the last number of months. It's been about four or five months since this injury out of Sting, and I think that Sting needs to give us an update on whether or not he's coming back and if, in fact, we will see him wrestling again in a WWE ring. Is Sting done? These are a lot of questions. We have more questions than we do answers in the follow of everything we've seen from SummerSlam to Night of Champions. As I mentioned, you know, it's been about two to five months since this injury out of Sting, and I think that Sting deserves, uh, you know, to be treated a lot better than what he has been, and sh who should we really be blaming? Creative, Triple H, and Stephanie. There are probably a number of parties we could be blaming for how Sting's been treated, um, but the thing is, this is an issue that's never reaching a point of resolvement, and if you're going to put Sting over, it's time to start putting Sting over so that wrestling fans don't remember him as the guy who loses in virtually every major pay-per-view match that he's been headlining over the last number of months. You know, you really have to go back on YouTube and Hulu and look at some of Sting's vintage footage from World Championship Wrestling to really put into perspective for yourself how decorative of a career Sting has actually had. You know, you just can't remember Sting for being the guy who loses at virtually every major pay-per-view, which is what the newer generation of wrestling fans are really unfortunately remembering Sting for being. That guy who always comes in at pay-per-views all the time now and loses against where he faces. It could be Bray Wyatt, it could be dashing Cody Rhodes, but Sting is always going to come out as the loser no matter who he faces in WWE because of how WWE have felt about Sting over the last number of 20 years. It's ridiculous. You know, what a difference 20 years could have made for Sting and how WWE are just holding this personal grudge against Sting for coming this close to putting WWE out of business for over 14 years. It took Sting 14 years to put that behind him to go. WWE, I mean, who could blame Sting for feeling the way he did towards Vince and Triple H? I don't blame Sting for feeling the way he did, especially with how they dealt and treated the uh, folding of World Championship Wrestling. They just purchased the talent and the footage, and they never did anything with the franchise after. They could have kept both of those brands going, and they could have had an amazing uh, competition between WCW and WWE, even if WWE ran both organizations. They could have kept World Championship Wrestling going, and Sting probably would have had a better business relationship out of everything that would have happened over the last 14 years. But because of the way that it all played out, who could blame Sting for feeling the way he did, posting that shoot video in 2005 on YouTube about how he felt about Vince McMahon and Triple H saying he would never work for Vince McMahon, obviously going back on what he said. But that's why I say, you know, Sting obviously didn't sign to lose all the time, and you better believe Sting didn't come back to lose all the time. He's obviously getting something out of this contract. He signed with WWE, and I'm trying to put a finger on the psychology of Sting losing all the time. What is this ultimately building up for? Is it building up for something far greater for Sting? Hopefully it is. I'm trying to put a finger on the psychology aspect of Sting losing all the time and how this is actually getting over uh, with wrestling fans. Obviously it's not getting a great response because a lot of people feel that Sting deserves a lot better than what he got, especially with how the fall of the Night of Champions match between Seth Rollins and Sting played out with the doctor coming out, checking on Sting the way he did, stopping the match. I know it's in the rule book now. The match has to be stopped if the severe injury is actually sustained during a match. They have to stop the match for the doctor to come out and do a full examination. But then to go from the match being stopped to being restarted and being curb stomped into the mat the way he was because Sting was so professional. The highlight of this match was not Rollins winning the match. The highlight of the match was how Sting was so professional. That's to be documented. It's not how Sting lost the match. It's just how Sting was so professional, wanting the match to continue and not wanting to be carried out. So they restarted the match only for Sting to be curb stomped, putting up a little bit of a minimal fight before going down to the curb stomp. But it's just ridiculous. Seth Rollins put over match after match after match. I thought we were really getting to a point of reprieval where Sting was actually going to be given the benefit of the doubt. But I guess I was daydreaming 
over the thought of Sting possibly becoming WWE Champion. And that's really all it was, a small daydream of Sting possibly being the champion. I just didn't want to realize the fact that WWE were not going to give him that honor of being champion with how WWE was not going to ever let WCW win. And we got that uh, from WrestleMania 31. There was no way they were putting over the NWO over DX, which was a huge part of the Attitude Era. There was no way the NWO was coming away and running roughshod over DX and Triple H the way that we thought uh, was all going to go. And a lot of wrestling fans, I'd say over 95% of the wrestling fans, were thinking that Sting was actually going to beat Triple H. And I know from having conversations with a lot of people, they were saying the same thing. They were hoping that Triple H was going to lose out of Sting. And Sting was going to come away from WrestleMania 31 with the victory. I mean, he had an incredible entrance. Triple H had a likewise incredible entrance. The theatrics in this match were incredible. The pure wrestling that we saw was amazing. Fans were chanting, this is awesome, from the get-go of the match. From the opening bell to the final bell, and the final move was given. Triple H driving that sledgehammer into the face of Sting after the Sweet Chin music was connected on by Shawn Michaels. Again, you know, going back to how I think there was absolutely no need after an incredible match for Shawn Michaels to come out and super kick Sting the way he did, which obviously gave us a teaser of what would ever happen if Shawn Michaels ever fought Sting, uh, which got me to thinking, you know, possibly a match in the future could be Shawn Michaels versus Sting. Sting can still wrestle. There's nothing wrong with Shawn Michaels. They've offered Shawn Michaels millions time and time again to come back for one match, and that one match could have been with Sting, but obviously there's no chance of that happening because Shawn Michaels says he's doing everything in his power to keep his word to wrestling fans that he's retired and we're never going to see him wrestle again. But sweet chin music after sweet chin music kind of leads you to believe that we could see Sting versus Shawn Michaels at some point in time. It's just ridiculous how WWE are trading Sting and trading legends like Shawn Michaels, making him seem insignificant to people like Triple H and Stephanie, who are, by God, inferior to everybody else. I think that this is just ridiculous, and it all falls back on how Triple H and Stephanie just want to find another ridiculous way of putting them over. And obviously they think that having them put over at the expense of people like Sting and Seth Rollins is the obvious effective way to go. And obviously Seth Rollins versus Triple H is what's going to be the play out of Seth Rollins coming back off this injury, but the thing is, it's just ridiculous, and I think Sting deserves a lot better than what he got, and unfortunately right now, both Sting and